Here's a quick introduction in uh, SPSS generalized estimating equations. I will show you how to lay out your data and how to carry out the test. So the generalized estimating equations is a, a repeated measures type design uh, for non-normally distributed data. For example, for binomial distributions and so on. And repeated measures means we have uh, several um, measurements or uh, let's say a different condition for the same subject. Yeah? Perhaps the same subject took seven tests or filled a survey or something like that. And then several subjects do the same, have responses to all these different factors from the same subject. So um, here's uh, a type of spreadsheet you might have, and I'll show you how you lay it out. Uh, you, there, there are going to be various independent variables, such as perhaps date, genotype, animal ID, what well, was more like a covariate or something else. And then uh, there'll be dependent variables, usually scalars. Uh, so this is, a, a similar model to the repeated measures and also variance, so we need um, continuous variables. Um, so you do not need, however, to lay out your data the way you lay them out for repeated measures and also variance in SPSS. In that situation, every repeated measure has to have its own table laid next to each other. Here, all the repeated measures are together. And so our subjects are these units, uh, units ID, these are neurons. So every, every unit is a neuron and it has seven measurements, you see. It's the same unit. You don't put them separately, like in groups. They are stacked on top of each other. The measures uh, are spatial frequency. You see, you can have uh, seven different spatial frequencies over which a neuron was measured, 0.0. .0. 0 0.5, 0 0.1, 0 point, sorry, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, and so on. And then they repeat again for the next neuron. Yeah? And then they repeat again for the next neuron. And every neuron takes seven rows. So this is the first neuron. This is the second neuron. This is the third neuron, and so on and so forth. And uh, that's basically it. For example, in genotype, we have wild types or knockouts. The knockouts are down at the bottom. It doesn't matter how they're arranged. As long, I suppose, as they're arranged in the same column, it doesn't matter even if they're mixed up. The uh, program, the algorithm will sort, you know, will sort out what belongs to what. So you don't have to worry too much about the layout. What uh, we're going to do now is uh, perhaps as a next step, compare what are your options. If you want to do uh, a, a generalized type uh, analysis of variance, that is with non-parametrically, non-parametric variance with not normally distributed data, and you have several options. Basically, um, you have the generalized linear models and the generalized linear models are here. This is, I've already done a video. Um, this is not for repeated measures, okay? This is an also variance type procedure for a single dependent variable, not repeated measures. For repeated measures, the options are either here, the generalized estimating equations, which is what I will review today, or for the mixed models, you can do the generalized linear mixed model. This is also uh, and uh, uh, repeated measures and other subvariants. Uh, subjects you see repeated measures. We're not going to cover that today. What um, I will cover today is um, the generalized estimating equations. So I've laid it out already, but we'll go over it step by step and we'll fill in all, um, all the uh, uh, fields. So the subject variables, this is our subjects. It could be human beings, it could be whatever. And in our case here, it's neurons, it is units. So they have a unit ID, it's a unique identifier for every unit, every neuron. So we put them here. And the response we're interested in can be 
all kinds of things as numerical variables, the yeah, analyze spikes, for example, or something else. Um, we'll choose this one, it's called OSI, we'll put it on the right. And then the type of model can be linear or gamma with long length, with log length. These are the only options. We don't have options for other types of distributions. So linear is normally distributed data. Gamma with log length is a kind of um, binomial distribution, a Poisson distribution. So uh, perhaps you have a different distribution. There's an issue there. Okay. But uh, if it's close to gamma, perhaps, at least as a first uh, estimate, you can start with that. And then we have already described the response. The predictors here are the factors you want to test for. These are the independent variables. And covariates can be things like uh, animal ID, for example, if these neurons were selected from different animals, or if individual subjects um, were uh, took a survey but they lived in different cities or from different backgrounds or whatever you can have that as a covariate then uh, the model uh, normally you want to have full fully factorial model this will give you let's go this works unique okay we have this too many times let's be on the left so this will do uh, the interaction. So we have two main factors, genotype and cortical layer, and we have the interaction between the two. Uh, estimation, there are three options, hybrid, Fisher, and newton Ruffian. I don't know exactly, well, in fact, I don't know at all the differences between these three. I'm not a statistician, unfortunately, I'm an end user of SBSS. If a statistician comes across my video clip, they can leave some comments down below. Okay, and also if anyone finds an error with what I'm saying, just make it clear in the comments so everyone is informed. Okay, thank you. And then as statistics, we have a, a, an option of type one or type three or type one and type three. You can add various descriptive outputs or whatever you want to have at the end. And uh, here, let's just clear it up just in case. Uh, ha, uh, we have some contrast, pairwise contrast, simple deviation. That's interesting. In any case, let's just put them on the left here and then collect them to the right. Contrast, cortical layer. I'm not sure what this will do, actually, I haven't done it, but let's go for pairwise. Whatever happens, happens. And then, um, well, I mean, you can, I guess you can save some of these or you can export the data in some other format. I will skip those. And so let's run the test and have a look at the output. So we have the dependent variable being OSI. We have probably the distribution gamma with the log link. Our subjects are the units, so unit ID. We have uh, 1372 uh, observations in total. Uh, and there are seven repeated measures. So the, the actual number of neurons is, where it, would it be? Is it somewhere here? I'm not sure if it's stated anywhere. You have to divide 372 by seven. Oh, it's here, 196. And the degrees of freedom there will be 195 times six to calculate degrees of freedom if you want to. Uh, that's for the between, sorry, this is, this is for the dependent variable. For the, for the independent variables, it would be what it would be here. Layer is three by one, is three. Okay. So um, and then um, here is some kind of average information. Here we have um, the, uh, the the effects. It's the statistical measure. So what you get is something called a walled chi square value and that's probably plotted in the table somewhere and depending on the degrees of freedom we get uh, a significance level and for example genotype uh, there's no significant difference between the two genotypes but uh, for the cortical area there's uh, probably of no difference of 0.032 this small statistical difference and the interaction between genotype and cortical layer is not significant 
And here we get something like a post hoc test. Uh, so, for example, if we look at the genotype, we have knockouts and wild types. And we have a significance of uh, probability of no difference uh, of 0 0.488. Uh, so there's no value here. If you, if you check here, it says 0a. A stands for set to 0 because this parameter is redundant. So basically, this is these values apply to both. Whatever is in this row for no counts applies also to the wild types, yeah? Because the comparison between the two. And so the algorithm doesn't do the whole calculation to put everything down in this row below a second target because it will take twice as long. Yeah, so you can fill it in yourself if you want. That's basically what's happening here. And so if you only have two uh, two levels per uh, factor, that's simple. If you have, as in the case of the cortical layer, four levels here, layer three, layer four, layer five, layer six, then I believe what the program is doing is comparing the first with the last, the second with the last, and the third with the last. And so then the last does not get uh, values of its own because it's already been compared with the other three. I think that's what is going on, but I'm not 100% certain. Uh, and so similarly with the other ones, so you don't recalculate then the comparison of layer six to layer three because you already have the comparison of layer three to layer six, which is right here, 0.0. And uh, then below, here down below, we have various means. These are estimated means and standard errors. The estimated means are not the real means. And if you're looking at the mean uh, uh, value for something that's at the tail end of the distribution, this this overestimate this estimated mean may be overestimated. So you have to be a little bit careful. And so this is the overall test results down here. The uh, wall chi square with the degrees of freedom and significance. This is the degrees of freedom for the uh, independent factors, if I'm not mistaken, fingers crossed. Yes. And um, you have various other parameters it gives you. It does calculate pairwise comparisons because we asked it to at one of the windows where I wasn't certain about a set do pairwise comparisons. So it's done various pairwise comparisons, comes up with the levels of significance. Okay, so that's it. Um, that was a very quick overview of the generalized estimating equations in SPSS. Thank you for watching.